How does a kid go from this? My name is Matthew DeLuca. I go to the collegiate school. I'm in ninth grade. And my favorite thing about Kids Walk for MSK Kids is to getting together with friends and family to support such a wonderful cause. To this. I can never snitch. That's on my kid. I put a chopper on a blade. Put a blade on his Lil Mabu, whose real name is Matthew Peter DeLuca, was born on April 4th, 2005 in Manhattan, New York. He went from a normal prep school child to one of the biggest drill rappers in the world. No matter what you think of his music, his story is nothing short of inspiring. In the last year, he has over 70 million views on music videos alone, and he sits at 5 million monthly listeners on Spotify. He's currently a senior at a collegiate school, the nearly 400-year-old Manhattan prep school that costs $60,000 a year. I'm surprised he hasn't been kicked out of this private school yet, to be honest. You would think this kid would be a lawyer doctor but it seems like it's not going to happen with his career soaring to new heights with his release of mathematical disrespect mabu seems to have a good understanding of marketing and artist he knew a white kid rapping the way he does would get mainstream attention even if it wasn't all good nah, he's lagging yo mabu yo yo his aggressive tone and lyrics would make you think he's from the hood, but it wasn't always like that. His oldest song on his YouTube channel called Heartbreaking isn't drill rap whatsoever. It's generic emo rap that was popularized in 2017, but he was doing this in 2020 when it was becoming outdated. It wasn't until Mabu released a song called Demon Time, where you could hear the clear influence of New York shining through. And this is where Mabu actually started seeing success. And he leaned into the joke of him being white and rapping like this with a bunch of skits and YouTube shorts, putting them on his own channel. Unlike a lot of artists, no other artist put shorts up like he did. These types of videos remind me of what 6 9 did back in like 2018, where he would do skits that would just go viral on Instagram. What's truly remarkable about the situation is that Mabu is achieving this level of success while still in high school. He even flexed in his newest hit that he still has to be in school eight hours a day, but he does better numbers than everyone who isn't. I spend eight hours a day in school and I still put up more numbers than these fleas. It seems that Mabo is just a regular kid that went to prep school and grew up in a privileged family. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's just what it seems like. But as I was doing the research for this video, I started to discover some strange things with his father. This video is sponsored by my f***ing self. Go to callboys.com and buy a hat right now. They ship out within 48 hours of buying them. Thank you. Here's the rest of the video. His father, Peter, is the owner of Greenwich Village Funeral Home. I found two interesting articles that are pretty dark. Mourner attacks funeral director during wake. So someone attacked Mabu's father during a funeral, basically. So this Gorgon family was having a funeral for someone. And during this funeral, allegedly, Mabu's dad went up to one of the family members and hinted at another person in the family dying soon and saying she's next in a way to this family during their funeral. <laughs> Mabu's dad told the cops that he approached him and just asked him about an unpaid bill about a previous funeral, but the family said that's not what he said to them. Gorgon was escorting his mother, who was the deceased woman's sister, through the funeral home at the time. Deluca made it sound like she's next and that he wanted the business. I thought this article is pretty funny because it shows that Mabu's father has a set of nuts to say some wild shit like that to a family who is already grieving about someone who died. But I discovered something even more disturbing and dark. There's another article titled, First Her Baby's Killed, and she's at death's door. Then her hubby stiffs her. From 2006, her one-year-old son was killed in her arms in a freak apartment collapse that left her clinically dead. Her right leg was nearly severed. She contracted hepatitis from the blood transfusions. One of her lungs is still held together by the staples. And now Jane DeLuca says she discovered that her husband she relied on and trusted through 10 years of hell betrayed her, conspiring with a pair of disgraced Brooklyn judges to cheat her out of millions of dollars. In a bombshell lawsuit filed in Manhattan Supreme Court, the pain-ravaged woman says her ex-husband Peter DeLuca, Mabu's father, who operates Greenwich Village Funeral Home, worked with then-judge and now-convict Victor Barron under indictment suspended Judge Michael Garson and others to fix their divorce case, hiding Peter's assets and costing her millions of dollars. The couple was divorced in 98, but DeLuca's suit said she didn't learn she'd been cheated until 2003 when her ex's dad told her about the alleged collusion. Since all this happened in 1998, I don't think this is Mabu's mother. I think this is just his dad's previous wife before his mother. Jane married Peter in 19. 
1978, and their greatest dream was to start a family. After eight long years, they were successful. Peter Craig DeLuca was brought into this world in a complicated and horrifying delivery in which Jane nearly lost her life. Their bliss became devastation 13 months later when their Sullivan Street townhouse collapsed. Jane had been on the top floor with the newborn baby when the floor gave away, but was clutching him to her breast underneath the rubble. For approximately three hours until their bodies could be rescued, Jane laid crushing and bleeding, experiencing almost agonizing pain of her injuries, except the greatest and most unbearable, that her child had already died in her arms. Jane herself was declared dead on arrival at the hospital, but medics were able to resuscitate her. Both of her lungs were punctured, her ribs crushed, her spleen ruptured, her right leg connected to her body only by skin. She spent over 60 days in the hospital and had to undergo 13 surgeries and 103 blood transfusions. The heartbroken mom contracted hepatitis B and C from the blood transfusions as well as a rare blood disease as dramatically increased the lifelong risks of contracting leukemia. She eventually received a $4 million settlement for her losses and injuries from the building collapse, but she was completely unaware that her husband was manipulating her finances and a scheme to divorce her and leave her in physical and emotional and financial ruin. He sued her for divorce in 1996. She said she was bullied into a settlement in 98 that left her with a house and $1 million, with her husband holding onto the rest of approximately $10 million estate. Yes, this article is disturbing. My condolences to the family, first of all, for losing a child. This is a very sticky situation. I just thought it was insane that I found this article in the first place. This is a dark side of Mabu's family that he lost basically a stepbrother, I think, if this isn't his mother. I don't think it's his mom because he was born in 2005 and all this happened in the 80s and 90s. So I just thought this was fucking unreal that his dad went through this. Obviously, we don't know why he would have divorced her at the worst possible time of her being injured and all that. But just a very dark and disturbing story that I discovered about Mabu's family. There's rumors that Mabu's dad is a record label executive and that Mabu's an industry plant, which I can tell you right now very confidently this is completely false. His dad is not a record label executive. There's this bullshit Reddit post. And I know Reddit's not a trustworthy place to get your information, but this guy wrote all this saying, before I get into it, there's some people who don't know who this kid is it's common that you see comments like how did this kid connect to the drill scene lil mabu is the son of jeffrey b vaughn who's the former chairman and ceo of capital record and just gives a whole breakdown of this complete nonsense which is false <laughs> there's no concrete evidence that he has any ties to a record label but there was the suspicions because he got a lot of big artists to comment fuck with his shit early on which is a little suspicious but who knows if he paid them or not there's some people that claim his dad is jeffrey vaughn who's the president of capital records which is laughable to me because i know Jeff Vaughn and I've met him and talked to him several times over the years because he's the guy that signed Lil Skies back in 2017 and I can 100% assure you his son is not Lil Mabu. <laughs> All the family bullshit aside though his music has struck a chord with a growing number of passionate fans who can't get enough his catchy hooks slick beats and mesmerizing flow. Even if his lifestyle doesn't really match the lyrics we all know that doesn't really matter anymore with the age of TikTok and the internet. Mabu's obviously not afraid to push the boundaries and experiment with new sounds infusing his tracks with unexpected twists and turns that keep listeners on their toes. It's also somewhat of a meme that he grew up in an upper class family and he didn't have to make it out the hood. As fans start to make fun of Mabu, he leans into the joke. He did this with being from a wealthy family and trip to the hood. That whole video is making fun of himself, pretty much. Taking a trip to the hood just to make it out. He's making fun of himself and trolling. Despite his growing fame, he chose to remain independent, releasing all his music without any label, manager, or contracts. Which I respect independent artists a lot. It takes a lot of balls to deny that upfront money. With the age of the internet, record labels are becoming more and more insignificant. The advance they give to smaller artists are never worth it because they can control your music and tarnish your image. And within the last 12 months, Mabu's career has gone to an entire new level. Getting big cosigns from other New York artists such as Didi Osama and Dusty Locane gives Mabu's name more credibility. I think what Mabu figured out recently is that music videos can create moments. It's almost the same model as 6ix9ine again, where 6ix9ine's music videos were bigger moments than when he dropped his own albums. And that's what Mabu's doing now, where he sees how a music video could captivate an audience and make it more viral than dropping a project, which is very, very hard to do. The song with Didi Osama, Throw, that music video was insane because of the beat switch and all of a sudden they're in a shootout on the street. Like little things like that add to why things go viral. I would put money that that was Mabu's idea to do that too. I would I would bet a lot of money Mabu thought of that and was like, I'm going to put that in a music video because that's going to go viral. Mabu's music is captivating fusion of cutting edge beats, mesmerizing melodies, and thought provoking lyrics that defy the norm and push boundaries. The only thing I would worry about at this point is if he could stay relevant for the next three to five years. With the type of music he's making now, it's hard to grow and make it interesting after a few years of doing it. There's only so much amount of drill music 
music you can make that's interesting and keeps an audience around for a long time. He clearly has the marketing brains, but his music has to stay interesting and captivating and keep the audience there. And I've been comparing him to 6 9 this whole video, who struggled at captivating an audience for his projects. He only made big moments from beefs and music videos. But it wouldn't surprise me if Mabu puts out his project in the next few months and has a good buzz. Comment down below what you think about Mabu. If you're new to my channel, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. This hat's on coughboys.com. Love you, boys. Peace out.